Wayne Chow emailed us asking, what's quicksand? And can you really get sucked under if you fall into it? We've all seen those movies where some unlucky traveler falls into quicksand and gets sucked down to their death. So first of all, what is quicksand? Well, basically, you take a pool of water with a clay bottom or some other dense material that prevents the water from draining out. Then you add lots of sand, and presto, you've got quicksand. Now, the nasty thing is that from the surface, you can't tell it's not solid until you step in it and fall in. Now, once you fall in, can you actually be sucked under by the quicksand? Dum, 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 dum. The truth? No. But can you drown in quicksand? Yes. If you fall into quicksand, the key is not to panic. Quicksand has a density greater than water. So if you lie on your back and spread your arms out, you can easily float on top of the pool. But if you struggle, you can become engulfed by the sand. The weight of the sand can push your body downwards. And if you continue to struggle, you can sink deeper into the pool, and eventually, you'll drown. is great. We're in the middle of the ocean, no food, no water. We're gonna die. What do you mean? We got plenty of water. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so it's a little salty. It's okay. Mike, you realize you do that, you're gonna die even faster. Well, listen, I'm thirsty. I'll take my chances. I'm serious. Don't drink that stuff. <laughs> Ow! It is salty. Oh, why is it so salty? Why is the ocean salty? A mystery that has puzzled mankind for thousands of years. All right, all right. The salt basically comes from two sources. The first, underwater volcanoes. When they erupt, they release tons of salt and minerals into the ocean. But that's not where most of the salt comes from. Nope. The biggest contributor of salt to the ocean is erosion of the continents. What? Well, when rainwater hits the ground, it wears away some of the salts and minerals contained in the soil. The water then carries these particles to the nearest river. In the river, the heavier particles eventually sink to the bottom, but the salt remains dissolved in the water. The river then carries the salt along until it finally dumps it into the ocean. So for millions of years, rivers all over the world have been bringing salt to the ocean. And the result is the salty liquid you see before you. All right, Shakespeare, sit down. So if it's the rivers that bring the salt to the oceans, then why don't the rivers taste salty? Well, the constant flow of fresh rainwater into the rivers keeps the salt concentration so low, you don't even notice it. But the ocean is different. It's like a big pool where the salt is forced to collect, because once it gets here, there's nowhere else for it to go. So, the salt comes from rivers and underwater volcanoes. But I'm getting real thirsty. And I want to know why drinking this stuff is going to kill me. Because there's one basic problem with salt. It absorbs water. And to prove it, just think back, oh, about a week ago. Remember those steaks you tried to barbecue? You know, the ones we were really looking forward to eating? Yeah. Well, do you also remember putting lots of salt on the steaks before they were cooked? That was seasoning. Yeah, well, whatever you want to call it. Those steaks ended up like a couple of hockey pucks. Why? Because the salt pulled most of the water out of the meat. A similar thing happens when you drink seawater. The cells in your body are like little bags full of fluid. Now, drinking seawater puts lots of extra salt into your body, 
And once the salt gets into your system, it acts like a sponge. It pulls the water out of your cells, which causes them to shrivel up. Now, shriveled cells don't work too well. And it's particularly serious when the cells in your brain start to lose their water. You feel dizzy, nauseous, and you can hallucinate. Eventually, your nerve cells stop working, so either your heart stops beating or your lungs stop breathing, and you die. Die? Can't your body just get rid of the salt? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Your kidneys are the organs responsible for removing any excess salt from your body. But drinking seawater creates a problem for them. What's the problem? Okay. To flush salt out of your body, you need water. I mean, you can't pee solid salt. Now, the best your kidneys can do is produce a urine with a salt concentration of about 2%. But seawater, on average, is about 3.5% salt. Yeah, so? Well, what it means is that for every cup of seawater that you drink, your kidneys have to produce a cup and a half of urine to get rid of all that salt. But you only drank one cup of water to start. So where does the extra half cup of fluid come from? Has to come from your tissues. In other words, if you drink seawater, you'll end up peeing out more water than you take in, trying to get rid of all the salt. So you dehydrate faster than not drinking anything at all. My, don't! <laughs> I'm so thirsty, I'll drink anything. Hey, look, a whale! And there's a question. Whales and mammals like us, how come they don't get dehydrated? Hmm, whales, you say? Whales don't get dehydrated because of one simple fact. Even though they live in salt water, they don't drink any of it. So where do they get their water? From their food. You see, just like our tissues are full of water, so are the tissues inside this fish. And thanks to a great filtration system, the water in here is a lot less salty than the ocean. So a whale gets all the water it needs just by eating a lot of fish. Here you go. Hey, why don't we try and catch some fish? <laughs> well, I'm way ahead of you guys. Oh, I think I got something. Oh, it's a big one. There it is. Is that a dolphin? <laughs> no dolphin. Ship designer David Charles dreams of building the fastest ship to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Find out if his dream comes true. 